Alrighty boys, welcome back to another video on the channel. You guys have been going crazy over here. The reactions, the videos, whatever. You guys are just loving it. So I appreciate all the support on the channel. Hopefully you guys enjoyed another weekend of football. It was a very fun one. We did two watch longs this week and we watched Liverpool uh, and then we watched Real Madrid as well. So uh, I watched so much football this weekend. I don't know about you guys. What was your favorite game this weekend? Get in the comments down below. Let me know your favorite game this weekend and why. I've been loving reading through the comments, been interacting with a lot of you guys. It's been really nice, man to just have a chat. Um, so let me know, what was your favorite game this weekend? Why was it your favorite game? My favorite game this weekend. We'll get started. We did this video last week. Um, drop a thumbs up if you enjoy it. And my uh, favorite game was right here. It was Chelsea versus Wolves. I felt like overall... Uh, this was such an entertaining game. There's so many games to talk about this weekend, and I'm trying to keep these videos not ultra long. Uh, so I'm going to do my best here. Uh, Jackson sc started off scoring really early in this one, and then we just saw Cole Palmer and Madueke just going crazy. Um, I'll be honest, if I'm a Chelsea fan here, I wouldn't really look at the stats. I felt like this game was one of the best games of the weekend. Uh, this game for me, all that it told me about Chelsea was that their defense is going to have to step it up a notch uh, to compete with the best teams. But let's not get it twisted. I think we all got a little overreactionary, and this is what I was saying last week with Chelsea. You're not supposed to beat Man City. Right. If you get any points out of that game, it's, you know, it's like extra dessert that you weren't expecting. Right. So, you know, for me, Chelsea went out, did business. Let's be honest and objective. Scoring six goals is extremely impressive. Um, and we want to see this going forward for how much money Chelsea have spent for the amount of players they brought in. It is going to take time. So I'm actually slightly impressed that they're even doing this with six goals. I know it's Wolves and we don't want to get too overreactionary. The two funny parts about this was Jackson going straight to Instagram after this game and just going right at Obi Mikel because he was like, yo, shut up. I scored. Um, because you know, Obi Mikel has been critical about him doing better, which is fair. He scored a lot of goals that season, but he does make bad decisions at times. I tweeted out last week. I think Jackson was really good yesterday. Um, Madueke literally was saying Wolverhampton is like a shit show, a shithole of a place, and then goes and drops a hat trick. I mean, that's colder than what Cole Palmer does. And Palmer showing us he's not a one-season wonder. I think overall, this is a really good result for Chelsea. Um, I really liked what I saw. I do want to comment really quickly. Shout out to Cunha and Larson. Those two together in any other system, they look crazy. Uh, Larson, you know, we don't see nines these days as good as him. His vision, his positioning, and he scored 13 goals in Celta Vigo last season. So he is legit. Hopefully he can get the service. And him and Cunha, they might be really good FPL pickups. They might be cooking. They look really good um, together. And uh, this was just this was just a crazy match. Really disappointing for Mudrick. Again, like I know he only got one half. And it's tough with Chelsea. These guys get a little bit of a chance. There's so many players on the team. If you don't go out and perform early... It's kind of like, okay, you know, maybe next game or next time in training. So that was that game. Liverpool-Brentford for me. Liverpool looked really strong. Liverpool just looked so, like, controlled. I don't know. For me, they had a lot of chances. Brentford keeper was going crazy. I'm not sure what match rating he got, but he was making saves left, right, and center. I mean, to concede two and still have a 7.4 is nuts. Diaz with a nice play. Uh, I dropped him on fantasy, so I'm a donut, and I brought in Salah, taking a minus four-point change. That really didn't work out too well for me at all. Um, Liverpool just looks strong. Liverpool, in my opinion, are like a more advanced Tottenham. And I know you guys are going to call me crazy for that, but what I mean by that is that Liverpool, I think they have a similar issue here where I'm worried about them. Like, I think they could win. They have the starting 11 that it takes to win the league. My problem with them is like, does one injury, right? And let me put it this way. Does a VVD going out mud this team, right? If Salah goes out, yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? So it's going to be one of those with them. Can they stay healthy? They look really good. And what I mean by that is that Tottenham last year was killing it, had one injury, boom. And it's like, if Madison or Son are injured for that team, are they going to be the Spurs that we see playing excellent football, which they played, you know, this weekend as well? Real Madrid, this is a very interesting talking point. And, and what I want to say here is this. They're impressing me a lot. And people will tell you that Real Madrid is not even playing well. And I will agree with you because I sat on my stream and I watched this game, you know, with some of you guys that watch the videos, some of you guys don't. And we were sitting there saying, bro, they look so bad. They look so bad. I mean, they're, pl they're playing with three left wingers and Bappe doesn't really look that comfortable where he's playing. He's better on the left. Um, they just didn't look great. I'll be honest, you know, and obviously um, it's just interesting with them because they still get it done with a 3-0 result. And what interested me the most was the team they were playing Park the bus the whole game. I mean, anyone who watches this video who plays football in real life, it is so hard no matter how good your team is or you are 
when you are playing a park the bus team, it is incredibly challenging to score. These teams will let you have the ball, and this is youth amateur that we play. Imagine in the pro league how they defend. So it's not easy. Um, it's not easy. Valverde had a free kick. Uh, you know, it's insane to me that Madrid, all right, bring in Brahim Diaz and Endrick, but specifically Brahim Diaz. I rate this guy. I mean, I mean, he is so special of a player. I was even seeing it last year at how efficient him and Josella were every time they got subbed in. So it's a blessing to have him if you're a Madrid fan. God, man. God. Endrick as well. Great to see him get a goal. I mean, it's nice. He just shuts up the haters right away, gets a goal. It was a beautiful goal. Ever since we saw that goal he scored in Brazil with the knee touch, I was like, yo, this guy is legit. So look, Copa America is not easy to score in. Um, I'm not really judging him too much off that. He's very young. Good result for Madrid. They needed to get three points. They drew the first game. And, uh, you know, Barca, six points so far. Atletico Madrid, I'll say this, you know, and I don't want to admit this because over the years, I haven't loved Atletico Madrid with the way they play football. Bro, they looked really solid. Now, Atletico is still that team that will let you have the ball. But, oh, my goodness, the Llorente have just a crazy goal. Griezmann with a free kick. He looks great. Um, the depth this team has, they got to figure it out with Alvarez and Sorloth because they're both so talented. It feels like a waste to have either of them benched, right? And I know that Alvarez can go and play out on the wing a little bit. So it'll be interesting to see if they will use Sorloth a little bit more. They're lining up right here in a 3-5-2 and Griezmann's playing up top. It's just tough. But they have such a hard working. I mean, but between like Barrios, DePaul, uh, Llorente, they, I mean, their midfield is just workhorses, bro. So the system they play is very effective. Watch out for Atletico Madrid this season. Girona was a team that did really well last season. Atletico Madrid looked really, really good. Um, I want to talk about Bayern Munich because I'm not impressed with Bayern Munich at all. At all. At all. I think they are going to have a lot of problems this season in the Bundesliga. Um, would not be surprised if they also didn't win the league or another title this year. Um, my, my reasoning beyond that is that I just don't trust Upa Meccano and Kim. I don't know what happened to Kim because when he was playing at Napoli, he was out of his mind good. And he just looks not the same out there. Um, you know, I'm worried about is Davies going to be as interested because there was a lot of rumors that Davies was going to leave the club. So I don't know. Is he as interested? Um, I'm just a little worried about this team. Pavlovich is very good, but stepping into a new role. I mean, Nabry in 2024, Lise is a good signing. Um, is it going to be, you know, too reliant on this Musiala Kane contributions? I don't know because... Wolfsburg are all right, but they struggled, man, and they hardly pulled this one out. Uh, it was it was not looking good. Um, hopefully, company as a defensive minded player can really help, you know, clean up the the defense. I don't know. I don't know. That's just for me. Let's talk about Manchester City. I mean, <laughs> in Manchester City is so funny because Ipswich obviously newly promoted and they don't even belong. The Prem is so like the difference between the top teams and the bottom teams is insane. I'll say this about Ipswich. I will give them the respect that I thought they actually tried to build out of the back, which I do respect, against a team like Man City and you're newly promoted. It takes a lot of balls to do that. Haaland is, is proving me right. I think he's going to get 35 goals this season. I could be wrong, but I think it's going to happen. Um, De Bruyne looks really good. We'll see what Kovacic is saying with the injury. I mean, Rico Lewis hit the post. Savinho, ooh. Savinho looks insane, so I really like the way he looks. I think Man City are, are really looking good. It's just funny that they went down one nothing. The goal was, like, so weird, and then they just scored literally three goals in four minutes. I mean, they just, like, it's like when a gamer, like, leans in, bro. That's, like, what happened in this game. I don't know. Wasn't even close. Uh, Manchester United, this one for me is really disappointing. We could look at the stats and say whatever. You know, I think Brighton hit the post at one point in this game. United really had this game. They really did. Um, Ten Hag has a huge... Uh, tendency with United specifically to concede in the last couple of minutes. But aside from like, I, it's two games in a row that if you're a United fan, even though you won the previous game, you got to be gutted, man, because Rashford has Garnacho open wide open in week one. They both mess it up. Okay. Rashford plays a bad ball. Garnacho like scuffs the shot, which he still could have put on target. And then how this week, Garnacho, I mean, is it Xerxes' fault? Is it Garnacho's fault? Who cares? That should be a no-brainer goal. 2-1, you put the tactics on, right? And then you see out the match. It's very frustrating if you're a United fan to see this because you basically feel like, okay, we've got this, and we're still figuring some stuff out. You know, again, Garnacho should probably be playing over Rashford. Diallo looks really good. They're still figuring out some lineup stuff, some transfer stuff. I don't know what happened to Mason Mount. He doesn't look the same at all. Um, 
Look, I think the combo of Delict and Martinez is sensational. Mazarawa is crazy. Onana's really good. I like a lot in this team. I think Diallo is really good. Um, I just, I don't understand what they're lining up with. I mean, when you have Xerxes, Xerxes got to start. Xerxes got to start. Bruno's got to be playing under him. I don't want to see Mount anymore. It's got to be Bruno, Xerxes, Garnacho, and Diallo. That's what I want to see next match, hopefully. I, I think McTominay is a huge loss. This is a guy that's been able to go into the midfield, play Cam, play Striker. I mean, they've been playing him anywhere and everywhere, and they won a trophy with him and Bruno last year at Striker. So, not just any trophy, beating Man City. I don't want to fall into the Tottenham curse. I don't want to fall into this curse because... I did this last season where I said, oh my God, they look crazy. Tottenham probably play, out of all the teams in the Prem, top three, top four level style football. You could even make the argument they play the best overall football in terms of exciting, going forward, and just looking dangerous. I mean, I don't know what they created this game chance-wise, but in terms of watching a game for entertainment, Spurs give you that, man, with 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 the manager and how they cook. They did this last season. They were top of the league early on last season for a good amount of time. They got an injury, and I don't want to get to that point here where I'm saying this is the team because they do look really good. Everton are shit. Let's be honest. I don't know what happens with Pickford when he goes to England and when he goes to Everton. I don't really know what goes on there. It's confusing because with the Euro, who's like the best goalkeeper, if you've seen the goal Sun scored, you'll be like, what the hell? But yeah, I mean, Spurs, look, the back line is there, right? They look great there. Madison and Bissouma. Madison is a hell of a player. You could just watch the game and you know this guy is a baller. So will he be able to stay healthy? And, you know, can Sun stay in the level of consistency that he's going to have to be at for Spurs to continue to get results? That is the question mark. I put Spurs like preseason in 7th or 8th, and my prediction on that was based on injuries, right? Same situation as last year. I've, I'm a little worried that I put Newcastle a little too high because they've got off to a really slow start. Right now, if you looked at my predictions video, I had United 4th, Chelsea 5th. So I don't, really know, I don't really know how I feel about all this. I did have Liverpool, Arsenal, and City 1st. City 1st, Arsenal 2nd. Um, let's segue over. Let's talk about Arsenal. I mean, Arsenal for me... This is where if you don't respect Arsenal as a team, you need to respect them. You could sit on Twitter and make fun of them last year for winning no trophies. They were able last season at the end of the season, and I know people are going to say war a trophy for Arsenal for doing this as a joke, but what they were able to do at the end of the last season, hang on with Man City while Man City was winning every game, putting the pressure, They did, Arsenal just kept winning last season. And look, Villa had chances in this one. This was not an easy game. This was a game where Arsenal have struggled with Villa in the past. They just got it done, and man, once you have a player in your team like Saliba that just controls the match with Raya, it gives me Allison VVD vibes. This is such an important part of a championship team. I don't think they're going to win it this year, but I could be surprised. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see what happens. They look really good. This was a huge win for them. Villa is a team that's going to give teams like Liverpool, City, um, you know, Spurs, United, a uh, lot of trouble with results, consistency, getting three points. So very good win for them. I really liked what I saw. I, I want to give a huge shout out to Barcelona because over the years, I've been really harsh on Barcelona with everything going on, you know, with almost still not registered transfers in and out. The players that are playing on this team are getting it done. They still don't have Araujo. The back line is not nearly as good as it could be and, and has been. They're running with Kunde, who's carrying everybody there. Pedri is back, which, what a player. And, man, Rafinha has been so impressive to me in the camp position. All right? He's been out wide over the years here. I just, where he's been playing at 10, he looks more natural and better there. And Lewandowski, mamma mia, is this guy something with Hansi Flick? I don't know what. If you guys don't know already, Lewandowski, I think, is on three goals already this season. I think. I could be wrong. could be two, but it's two definitely, maybe three. He's hit the post six times. I'm not going to flame somebody for hitting the post because they're you know it's close enough right it's not a goal but he looks on it Yamal is just Yamal um you know this is kind of for me a what could have been with this team if they did get Nico Williams Nico Williams very quiet in this game we expected more Kunde was just being Kunde but man it was like a what could have been because as much as I do love Ferran Torres I just think he's funny um not saying he's a great insane player but man what could have been if they got Nico because they're off to six points while both of the Madrid's already dropped points this season 
I think we got to watch out for Dortmund in the Bundesliga. It's reminding me of the team last season. I mean, look, they got all the way to the Champions League final. Um, and look, these guys are playing confident. They're young. They're hungry. They want to get wins. I, I think we got to watch out for them in the Bundesliga. I mean, Leverkusen are still doing the, the magic in the end of the match. So them too, we got to watch out for. And man, just a weird one to talk about real quick going into the Serie A. This is not going how I expected. Juve are winning right now, so they'll probably get three points. I, Milan, bro, I don't know what's going on with Milan. They look so good all preseason. And what does it matter? After two games, they have one point. So they'll figure it out, but not what I expected here seeing Juve that far ahead. And PSG, we got to watch out for PSG. I watched the highlights. This guy, Barcola, is special. I don't watch the French League a lot. But let's watch out for these guys this season because they played some amazing ball last season. They probably should have been in the final. They hit the post six times against Dortmund. And a lot of that wasn't all from Mbappe. And they look fluid, a team out there. So I'm watching out for PSG. This is a team that could give some teams a lot of trouble in the Champions League this year. We will see because they played amazing last year. And they look fire uh, this year as well. So that's going to be it, guys. What was your favorite game over the weekend? Mine was Chelsea Wolves. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. We'll see you guys in another one soon. Peace.